Hey guys, Dexter here from Dexter's Workshop. This is the part two of the KiCad tutorial. Uh, in this part, uh, I will try and show you how to export your schematic to PCB design. As it's not necessarily intuitive uh, from the start, as KiCad, as I said, is using um, the type of workflow that almost all professional CAD systems are using. Uh, so um, they they split the 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 connection between the symbol and the PCB footprint. That is the main reason some of you will have problems in understanding how all works especially if you are a eagle cad or a deep trace user which by the way as i said i'm a eagle CAD, i was a eagle cad user for for 15 years 15 years of eagle cad and after i've started working with kcad and uh, doing uh, some tests with it uh, i've decided that i will uh, actually port all my projects from eagle cad to kicad pcb it's the workflow uh, it's much faster everything it's uh, it's better and in terms of uh, uh, i don't know <laughs> ergonomy of uh, the way you interact with the software. Uh, another thing, the the router that it's used in PCB version uh, in the PCB designer side, it's absolutely outstanding, especially for um, digital design. Uh, of course, you can do any type of design with it, but for digital design where you have a lot of tracks uh like the ones ones from uh, the, the buses for, for from digital buses uh you you'll see that it's it's quite an excellent tool and uh, uh, with some features that are not available in medium cad software packages not not uh, deep trace nor eagle uh, have push and shove and there are uh, I, I do think that Altium has this uh, feature uh, and and pads, but those are very expensive CAD packages, and oh, well, actually it will it will uh, break the bank. <laughs> so, <clears throat> as I said before, you're be able to um, to go on and use and import the schematic to the PCB. You'll have to assign uh, PCB footprints. By doing doing this uh, is by going to the run CV PCB uh, that is located in the toolbar near the bug, and that will be perform electri electrical rules check. Uh, by pressing this, it will say no PCB footprint libraries are listed to the current footprint library table. And of course, you'll get some some errors. Go to preferences, manage footprint library, and here, at this particular point, you might encounter a piece of a bug. Uh, if you already had some libraries uh, loaded inside, and you would have deleted the library list click OK and then reopen the PCB library table and click append wizard and reload some new libraries the list or uh, the list on the on the left side would actually not get refreshed and you will have to close the project and reopen it and then you'll have a refresh version of the libraries that are uh, loaded uh, this was one of the idiotic bu bugs that I was telling you. So it will get fixed soon enough, maybe in the next couple of releases. But uh, it's not it's not that that bad after all. You can append new footprints files by using append with wizard 
files on my computer you can actually uh, download uh, the footprints from the git repository a lot of footprints there it's a very comp comprehensive collection of footprints smd M and thd alike um, i think i will start using the libraries provided with the KiCad, and uh, i will uh, use only the very special parts that are actually used in pedal designs like uh, uh, jacks uh, dc jacks etc uh, that i'm going to use from from my uh, uh, other libraries because the the KiCad libraries are very comprehensive that they have a lot of parts and will actually cover a lot of uh, uh, um, a lot of processes Okay, so going with files from my computer, I'm going to choose the footprints that were associated or were connected uh, with the the libraries that I'm uh, that I've used for uh, for the symbols. And doing this, it's again very easy. Components, uh, sorry, footprints. So uh, you will see that here you have a couple of directories. Uh, each directory will have its own name and will have dot pretty. Inside of the directories, you will have uh, a collection of different footprints that can be used. So basically, all the footprints from a certain device or symbol uh like resistors that can have uh different uh, leads uh, dimensions can be grouped inside the directory uh that will have dot pretty so here by keeping your shift key pressed you can go to the end of the list and click the last one and you can actually import them all status okay format keycad next you can either import them to global library configuration or to the current project only i'm going for the global library configuration and you'll have them imported so at this particular moment what i was telling you about is the fact that on your left side the list will not get populated with the new uh, libraries you can actually save the footprint association it will do nothing uh, you can actually go on and run cv pcb and you will not have your libraries your footprint libraries in the left side list uh, what you can actually do save and exit okay it's close the whole shebang and open it open the schematic again go on and right now you'll have them loaded on your left side uh, as I said it's a little bit of idiotic bug that uh, was not present until two versions ago I guess it will get fixed in next versions uh, it's not so bad actually if you are going to associate uh, uh, some libraries with a certain project then you will have them there anyway so it's, it's not such a big deal uh, you can you can actually let KiCad associate your uh, your footprints with your parts uh, according to some some rules and those are uh, filter footprint list by schematic symbol keywords you can define keywords for each uh, symbol and the same keywords in the footprints and you can actually get them associated automatically uh, or you can uh, filter footprint by pin count and for a certain part will show you only the the footprints that have the same pin count as that particular symbol you can filter uh, 
footprint list by library you can actually go here and choose your library and here on the right side you will have the footprints available in that particular library and you can associate it by hand with your symbols and I will show you in a minute how or you can filter footprint list using a partial name or a pattern you can use question marks uh, asterisks to as wildcards and you can actually search for a particular pattern uh, because I'm a little bit of a control freak I usually go filter footprint list by library and I'm going on each of the libraries and I'm going to associate the the footprints with the that particular symbol uh, for a little bit of ease of use you can view select footprint I'm doing this all the time view select footprint so you can see what type of footprint are you going to associate with with that particular symbol okay uh, let's say let's see what we have here it's we can use this kind so each footprint will get associated by double clicking the specific footprint and you can see the cursor it's moving down to the next part but we are having three capacitors all three of the same type we are going to click and you will get the footprint associated here with your particular symbol uh, DC jack DC jack will be in the jack library and we will associate it with the this type of, of footprint resistors we have resistors well we have resistors and we can associate with any type of footprint we like uh, now with the <clears throat> with the reg one you will have a to 92 type so you can go uh, and see from transistors TO92 you will have it here this is a 7815 TO92 voltage regulator after this after you have done your association of course you can automate uh, you can you can uh, do a lot of automatizations for for this type of association you don't have to uh, you don't have to do it by hand especially in very big schematics where your uh, where your uh, symbols are uh, not associated with with certain footprints you can have uh, you can actually have some uh, some type of uh, files that will define that specific association okay you can uh, footprint association file and you can add here uh, certain directives that for a particular part or for a particular group of parts you will get a certain footprint like for all 0805 resistors you will get a 0805 footprint but for for small to medium schematics you can go by hand association and I actually encourage to do that because it's much safer and until you'll get used to the software pack package and what it can do it it will actually uh, get you to to a point where you you will uh, it's better to have have them uh, uh, done by hand after that you go save save footprint associations and that's it that's all another thing that it's nice to do is generate a net list generate a net list will go on and click on the net button generate and you can only do it uh, only one time at this particular moment you're ready to go on and uh, export your schematic to the PCB and you can do that by clicking run PCB new to layout printed circuit board and here you have the the place where you can design your PCB I'm putting always my uh, I always put my grid in inches because 
it's uh, most of the parts are designed in inches so it's better to have a grid that will uh, accommodate any type of parts than to have it in millimeters and your grids or your pads will be misaligned uh, especially that I'm using uh, uh, the grid a lot for uh, parts alignments and uh, uh, edge cuts alignments and etc. Uh, I will not go for uh, for such a, a small grid of five mils. Five mils is a lot. Uh, it's very fine for some through hole devices. Uh, so usually what I'm doing is going by 25 mils. Uh, or half of it. Half of 25 is 0 0.125, I guess. Uh, uh, 100 and uh, yeah, let's see. <laughs> uh, 0 0.25. Uh, 0 0.25. By two zero. 125 uh, inches so you can for for this particular uh, project I would go with 25 mils it's it's uh, it's it's more than enough for through hole devices in my humble opinion uh, well after you you mm, set your grid you can go on and import the um, you can import the parts and you can do that by read net net list and read current let net list by default uh, the net list will be read uh, the the one from inside the project directory you can you can read different net lists if you have them uh, for for different like I told you for different uh, uh versions of the same schematic one with through hole devices one with smd so read current net list and that will bring uh all the uh the parts inside your pcb designer you can go test footprint and see if there are duplicates missing or extras you can go and close it and place it so at this particular moment, uh, almost all of the workflow operations are the same as in the schematic. You can place yourself over a particular PCB uh, and you can choose move by pressing M, place it over, choose move, pressing M. You can rotate it by pressing R. So, M, rotate it, you can, again, oopsie, it's better, it's always better to, to place yourself above a pad, it's much better to place yourself ab above a, pod, a pad, let's go on and move it this, move this one. I don't know just just stay with me <laughs> as I'm doing this uh, if the if your uh, selection will be ambiguous uh, Kikad will ask for a clarification and so if I'm going above the symbol where all the texts and the uh, designators are and press M he would like to know what I would like to move. Do I like to move footprint? Would I like to move reference? Or would I like to move value? If I'm going to move value, I'm going to choose value. If I'm going to move reference, I'm going to move the reference. Okay.
after that you would like to define your PCB edges so you can do that by going on the right panel and choosing edge cuts you will see that it will be selected by a, a tiny blue triangle so if you're going to choose edge cuts here are the layers that are available at this particular moment so if you're going to choose edge cuts and add graphic lines and at this particular moment you can add some graphic lines preferably you will want them straight but uh, on the graphical line uh, on the edge uh, cuts layer you can place whatever graphical element you like like arcs etc you can have your your board to be round or any any type of graphical elements um, you can actually after you you placed your your elements you can actually modify uh, modify the the board outlines in the same manner you can go on and click it and modify it okay you would like this one placed oops sorry at the end of the board and start and like this uh, okay another thing that KiCad do have is the term of uh, net classes basically net classes with net classes you can define uh, the properties of a net like names types uh, and type of uh, uh, of traces that will be assigned automatically let's say for ground connections you would like a trace with uh, with the width of 40 mils and uh, uh, you would like a clearance of uh, at least 12 mils between uh, between pads and other traces so this you will have to define you can however define a general trace uh, a default trace if you like and assign all the classes there and that particular trace uh, that particular class the default class is defined in design rules design rules you can see here that a default net class is used you can however go with minimum track width but i would not recommend you to to modify it from here uh, the, the correct workflow is by modifying the class you can however modify the class or add your own class and then assign all the nets to that particular class or only a part of it let's say that we would like to add a class name g and d that would be the ground and i would like to have my clearance at 0. Uh, 0 0.012 that will place us in the 12 mil zone a track width of 0 0.040 mil uh, that would be 40 mils and the rest you can however leave it like so you might get <coughs> a warning because different pair differential pair width will be smaller than your track width at least in in uh, previous versions but i would find it logical if the difference pair width will be smaller than the default as you can see they solve that another another uh, class you would like to define would be let's say for the rest and that would be the vcc line that we are going to define is as also a 12 mil clearance but we would like to go on and use a smaller trace like 24 mils at this particular moment you can assign nets to your classes by 
uh, adding net class membership. Net class membership will go on and uh, you can use your uh, newly defined net classes by choose them from here and you can see that the ground does not have any member you can actually add the net the complete ground net to the ground okay another uh, oh there are any okay uh, another thing that you can do is uh, now that you have defined your VCC class is assign a member to the VCC the rest if are not assigned to any type of uh, of class will have the default dimensions which in my humble opinion the default dimensions are a little bit smaller and uh, are a little bit marginal for uh, the majority of uh, fab houses so you'd like a clearance of at least 12 mils it's what I'm using you can use whatever value you'd like according to your electrical specifications uh, and a track width of at least 16 mils and of course differential pair will need to be 16 mils after you are pressing ok you are ready to route your PCB you are ready to route your PCB and uh, you are doing this by pressing X by pressing X you go with your mouse above any pad you're pressing X and after this click and drag it's that easy you can change the direction of the PCB trace by pressing your slash uh, slash key as you can see you can change the direction by pressing the slash key which is very important in case you would like your PCB to have a certain format which however you can modify later as you can see all the ground connections are going to have the same dimension of the trace one thing I would not recommend it's to use sharp edges for the PCB I mean like this don't use it it looks ugly it can actually uh, cause a lot of trouble in uh, high-speed environments and uh, it will actually put a lot of strain on the on the fabric in the fabrication process uh, also it's it's not very sturdy so a 45 degree angle for for it it will be more than enough this is where you can actually you can however place the tracks in whatever uh, way you like as you can see VCC by being uh, by being defined as as a, I don't know 24 mils it will have 24 mils the VCC connection the rest however will have the rest however will have uh, of 16 mil 16 mil okay let's see this okay okay at this particular point you can see that KiCad is coming with some very very nice features and the the one that uh, will label, label your nets is one of the most important feature you will clearly see it and you'll have it in your face at any given time just zoom in and you'll see your net okay another very important feature that I really like 
with KiCad is the fact that you can freely drag in a very orderly manner uh, you can drag the traces by placing yourself over the uh, a piece of trace that you like to drag and pressing D will actually keep your trace at a 45 degree angle you can go on and D and have it moved according to your specification you can go on drag it and you'll have it see you can actually modify the traces on the fly without having to uh, reroute them but this is not a very big deal a lot of some some packages do have it so it's it's not such a big deal what uh, is the most important feature of KiCad is the router that is the part uh, that helps you to lay down traces and I will actually delete the, the, the traces right now the some traces right now by placing over them and pressing delete I would like to delete the track and it will delete the track uh, another um, thing that you can do is define the track width on the fly when you are in routing mode so this is the normal mode without anything selected pressing X will put you in routing mode in trace mode and by pressing Q will be the track width that you can modify uh, another thing that you can modify by being a route in routing mode is the behavior of the router so it now you are free in selection mode by pressing X going in routing mode Pressing E will edit the interactive router settings. So what I like to use is the shove feature. You can highlight collision or you can walk around. And I will give you an insight both of, uh, of, those, of those features. Okay? You can optimize the optimizer effort. Uh, you can allow the DRC violation. I would not recommend you that. Uh, and free angle mode no shove no walk around uh, free angle mode will actually not keep you the constraint of having 45 degree angle I would not recommend that either uh, so at this particular point we are in shove mode shove mode means the router will try to move the traces without uh, modifying the um, the layer or uh, the 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 connection so the, the router will try to move the trace to satisfy your DRCs okay as you can see going around will not solve the particular uh, routing process okay I can go around here around here but it will not solve it but as you can see the traces are move uh, are moved to satisfy the the clearance that is set in your DRC rule set this is a very 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 nice feature especially when you have a lot of bus connections and you will have to stick another trace between the bus connections the, the already traced bus connections and in packages like Eagle and Deep Trace you can't do that without moving the whole traces the whole the whole uh, uh, group of traces uh, by select them 
and then you can place a trace of your uh, of your choice and then uh, redo the whole aesthetical uh, operations on the traces because um, they they would they would look very very bad uh, by by using push and shove will actually solve this particular problem because it will not violate DRC it will keep an even distance and an even angle okay uh, that's about push and shove uh, highlight collisions would only highlight the collisions you see you can actually go on go over it but it will not be valid it will not be valid and it will highlight the collisions that you're making over the PCB. Another very nice feature, in case you don't like to use push and shove, you can use this and you'll see whenever a collision is detected and that particular connection is not uh, at the source, uh, at the destination um, uh, connection. And the other one is walk around. Walk around is something like an auto router. It will try to solve the problems around your connections. So if you are going to to pull the trace, it will not violate DRC. It will not violate DRC. You cannot pass over at a certain distance and it will try to keep distance the correct distance but when an obstacle is in front of it it will try to find a different route for this particular routing job but as I said I'm using shove a lot so uh, there is no need to actually use uh, walk around and uh, it, only if you like to have a follow me you have a follow me situation uh, for which you would like to have a specific route and it will try to find uh, some optimizing points and some way to walk around it if not shove it's more than enough <clears throat> uh, okay so after after this, uh, after you, you you have done your routing job, you can, however, go on and uh, see the DRC if there are some DRC violations. So perform design rule check. It's a very good, um, it's a very good operation to have. It's a, it's a something that you would like to do. Uh, you can go start DRC, nothing is wrong with it. You can list unconnected and if there were unconnected pins, you would get some markers and I will show you how. I will delete this trace, I will run DRC, list unconnected and you can see that I have an error that will have some markers placed. You can see that already put my my mouse over it. Okay, if you are going to solve it by pressing X and route it, you can go on. List unconnected. There are no problems, no markers. That will actually validate your PCB against the set of rules that it's very important if you have bigger PCBs and your uh, um, uh, and complex and multi layers and actually uh, you'll have to check for a DRC violation um, another very useful feature that uh, KiCad has is the 3d viewer I'm not having any um, 3D models defined for th those particular uh, parts, but if you are using uh, KiCad's parts, 
you will uh, you will have them there and uh, actually you'll have a very nice render uh, for uh, uh, for this uh, for this PCB there are two uh, main renders uh, one it's OpenGL which is a lot faster okay uh, and in case you'd like to have a more realistic render you can place your PCB in the way you like it and uh, go on and use ray tracing and that will actually render the holes and it will make it look way nicer than the the, the OpenGL one but the render pro the rendering process will take place whenever the PCB is moved or the angle change or etc so this is the render you can you can save uh, you can create image in png or J uh, jpeg format and uh, also the most important thing is the fact that kicad in the latest versions uh, introduced a step export so you can actually export it as a step uh, as a step file and then import it in your mechanical design and see how it looks like how is the the enclosure and stuff like this another question that i've received on facebook today was how will i add an enclosure uh, an enclosure footprint and design around it well you'll have to understand that the enclosures are footprints and are not symbols and you can add them inside the PCB and you can add a certain footprint that is not uh, that is not uh, defined or uh, um, connected to a part in the schematic you you don't have this constraint to to have your footprints uh, or parts uh, connected to the parts that are defined in in the schematic side but when you are going to run the read net list operation the the parts or the elements that are not defined in the uh, in the schematic will actually be deleted and I will show you for placing a custom footprint or a footprint inside the PCB you press O click and you can go select by browser I can go and uh, go and choose enclosures and I'm going to choose 5019B double click it and place it like let's see let's let's find some some space okay so here you have your your footprint and you can actually design uh, around it of course the moving uh, operation will be uh, uh, available for groups too so you can go on select the whole group place it over and move it so you can actually I don't know just place it here okay <laughs> When you are going to render this type of view, you will have only the outlines and you will see them better if you are going to preference render engine OpenGL. You will see it way better. For this particular footprint and some others, I've defined uh, a 3D association, so I'll have them. Uh, rendered in 3d mode and i i have associated uh, stl files to them and uh that 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 was kind of that was kind of it so uh this is how you're adding custom footprints uh on the schematic uh, on the pcb side of course you can add any type of footprints go on select by browsers you can go and uh, uh use some jacks uh, I don't know this type of jack I will add it here 
Okay. And I can uh, copy it. Just a second. Where you have the copy, control C and control and then control V. And you can have have it copied. Okay. So yeah, basically you can, you can add whatever footprints you like in the PCB, but what you will not have, you will not have connections to it. And if you're going to read netlist or going to tools, update PCB from schematic, you will have your undefined symbol removed. Update PCB, close. So this is the only thing you have left because this is defined in the schematic. Uh, at this particular moment, I will stop this tutorial. There will be another uh, two parts in which I will show you how to assign 3D footprints, uh, 3D models to the footprints uh, export your gearable files for uh, for fabrication and some other operations that are available in PCB design. I will show you how to define your custom footprints and your custom symbols um, and some tips and tricks along the way for uh, uh, for this. Uh, for, for this software package, like adding an image, uh, like, uh, uh, I don't know, doing uh, two types of uh, PCB designs for the same schematic and so on. I hope you find it useful. Uh, I know it was a little bit longer than I would expect it, but I'd like to uh, have it made in an orderly manner and everything should be as clear as it can be. Uh, if you like it, please subscribe to my channel, uh, give a thumb up, share it, it's free as in beer. This is Dexter from Dexter's Workshop, bye bye.